ever stop to wonder, what if the continuity was different? Well, today we're asking the question, what if the Dinobots never had existed? In particular, I'm looking at series one and two of the Generation One cartoon and seeing how this would change things, if at all. Quick disclaimer, Omega Supreme won't be factored into this too much. His appearances in the Generation One cartoon are sporadic at best, so we're not going to count on him to turn up. So let's say, for whatever reason, the Dinobots are not created by the Autobots, or the Decepticons for that matter. Let's just say there are no dinosaur bones found, or there are no resources available. How does this change things for the Autobots to not have their heavily armoured force? By and large, things stay the same. Whilst the episode War of the Dinobots simply wouldn't take place, the first time you would really encounter the Dinobots to the point that it would have made a difference is at the end of the episode, Heavy Metal War. Whilst the Autobots and Decepticons are watching a one-on-one -on -one contest between Optimus Prime and Megatron, the Constructicons are sent to infiltrate the Ark and destroy Teletrail 1. It's at this point that the Dinobots intervene, forcing the Constructicons to retreat and merge into Devastator. In a different timeline, without the Dinobots, the Constructicons would still infiltrate the Ark and would still attempt to destroy Teletrail 1. The Autobots would arrive later, as they are seen to do so in the episode Heavy Metal War, as they are carrying a very damaged Optimus back to base with their tails between their legs. Now they would fight off the Constructicons, even if they merge into Devastator. It still shouldn't be too much of an impossible task for the entire Autobot army to take on one Combiner team. Whilst this isn't an impossible fight for the Autobots, this would be made much harder without the Dinobots to help them. They would ultimately drive Devastator away, but this battle would take its toll on the Ark and Teletrail 1. The other episode that would change drastically is in the episode Desertion of the Dinobots, in which the Autobots and Decepticons are suffering from being away from their home planet for too long and are lacking in Cybertronium. In an alternative timeline, this situation is much more desperate. Whilst both sides are suffering, Megatron still has the advantage of Shockwave and the Space Bridge, meaning that supplies could be sent and allowing the Decepticons to recover quickly. The Autobots would have little alternative than to send Spike and Carly to Cybertron, or go themselves. Knowing Optimus' views, he would nominate that the Autobots go themselves rather than sending the humans. This would then mean that the Autobots would have to attempt to get through the Space Bridge to Cybertron. This would actually mean many Autobots would fall, as the Space Bridge is guarded by the Constructicons, who ultimately form Devastator. Now the Autobots are in a weakened state at this point, and this mission would mean that pretty much every Autobot would have to go, just to stand a chance of putting up a fight against Devastator. Depending how many fall in battle against the Constructicons, this would be a different situation on Cybertron. There's nothing to say that the Autobots would instantly recover, as they didn't instantly suffer as soon as they landed on Earth. Nevertheless, the Autobots have overwhelming numbers, and are able to get the Cybertronian and return to Earth but have lost many of their comrades in the process. The Decepticons have in the Space Bridge and are able to get the supplies quicker, force the Autobots into a reckless mission just to survive. The Dinobots have always been the much needed muscle to take on the likes of Devastator. Whilst they haven't been able to combine until recently, the five squad Dinobot team has been more than enough to give a fair fight against the six combiner team of the Constructicons. However, in series two, this changes again. Megatron has always had the advantage when it comes to Combiners. The Autobots do gain Superion and Defensor, but Megatron has always got the numbers advantage in that he has Devastator, Menasaur, and Baruticus, not to mention a couple of Triple Changes. There isn't one specific moment here, however in Series 2, the Autobots have befriended the humans, and they are allowed to co-inhabit Earth peacefully whilst keeping the Decepticons at bay. Without the Dinobots and the Autobots down on heavy power, the situation could be much more dire, and they may not be so easily welcomed by the humans. This of course comes to one final point, Autobot City in 1986. By the time Series 2 ends, the Autobots are allowed to set up their own city on Earth, called Autobot City, with the Decepticons held up on Cybertron. But by the time 1986 comes around, this could be more Decepticon City than Autobot City. Otherwise, if Autobot City does remain, there could be a lot more casualties if Devastator is interrupted. 
It's hard to say, with the Dinobots' appearance, if this changes the tide of the war, but they did scare the Decepticons into such a state. In many incarnations, Grimlock has often beaten Megatron in one-on-one -on -one combat, and, whether Omega Supreme is there or not, they were often relied on when Devastator joined the fray. The gradual change in Season 2 will be the most telling. The Autobots are on a back foot from the start and would have to rethink their approach. They do create the Aerial Bots, but that was in response to Megatron creating the Stunticons. In an alternative timeline, they would have to rethink their approach to change the tide. And there you go, that's the other side of the Matrix and if the Dinobots never had existed. What do you think? Do you think in Series 1 and 2 of the Generation 1 cartoon and the 1986 movie, if the Dinobots hadn't been there, would it have made such a profound difference? Do you have to look at specific points and would they have everlasting impacts? Leave a comment with your views below, I'd love to hear what you think. Also, let me know if there's anything else you want to look at on the other side of the Matrix. I'll be doing these videos from time to time. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.